Hi, I'm Slammy Jammy, and in this video today, we will be going through my UI setup. So I will be going through one by one every single add-on that I use, and I'll even do a step-by-step -step instruction on how to set up each of those add-ons exactly as I have them. If you're quite confident with add-ons, you can just look in the description and it'll have them all listed. I will go through them all first, and then after that, it will be the step-by-step -step guide. So stick around for the guide if you're a bit unsure, but feel free to just steal the add-ons and get on your way. As always, if you find any of this useful, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. I've been getting a lot of questions recently from people that have watched my other videos. So I just thought this is the easiest way to help everyone with any questions they've got about the UI. Anyone can probably use this UI, especially range DPS and obviously hunters, because that's what I play. The only people it's not great for, I would say, is healers and possibly tanks, just because of the way I've got certain things laid out. But first of all, let's just bring up the UI, explain the basics, and we'll start going through the add-ons one by one. So this is a snapshot of the Lurk Below encounter and my UI. This is a good example because it uses pretty much everything that I have in my UI on this fight. The basic principle of my UI is to try and keep the important things central. So stuff like boss timers, the upcoming boss timers, my weak auras, obviously my cast bar, threat bars, and my target and my health. And things that are a bit less important like the raid frames or healing done, damage done, kind of towards the outer edge and the chat obviously towards the outer edge of the screen. For me, I just prefer this kind of configuration because it allows me to focus much more on my character and on boss timers and on the damage I'm dealing through my cast bar and weak horrors instead of me worrying that, you know, a random warlock's died or a random mage has run out of mana. That stuff's important to the raid, but it's not important to me as a damage dealer. I just need to focus on my own damage and my own performance and obviously not dying to the boss's mechanics. So to go through the add-ons one by one. So the majority of my UI is from Elf UI. So the raid frames, the tank frames, my unit frames, the enemy unit frames, the buffs, and the actual action bars themselves, pretty much everything here is all from Elf UI. Threat bar is from Threat Classic 2. Damage done and healing done is via details. And then anything that kind of pops up in this side of the screen on any of the videos is for weak horrors, but I'll go through, I'll, I'll list the individual weak horrors after this. Then we have deadly boss mods, which is giving you the timers here for the boss and also the upcoming timers here. This panel down here, which is saying seven to 10 yards is a weak horror just for tracking your distance from the boss, which is really useful for making sure that you are max range on encounters if you need to be. And then the main one, the one I get asked about the most is a cast bar, which is via quartz. Now, quartz out the box does not look like this. You have to make a few tweaks to it, mainly just to get your auto shots to show up like they do here. And I'll go through that in the more in-depth explanation when I basically rebuild the UI from scratch and we'll show you where, how to tailor everything so it looks like this. So speaking of weak horrors, I highly recommend you download this add-on, which is just called Weak Auras Companion. Within this one add-on, you can keep all of your weak auras up to date by simply clicking the button. Once you've downloaded the updates in-game, if you navigate to weak auras, they will show like this with like an updating symbol. If you click them and then select update auras and click import update, it updates them for you without the need for you to constantly re-download the same weak auras or delete old ones for new ones. So these are all the weak horrors I currently have installed. Ignore this one because that's my rogue. So we have a kill command. This plays a huge kill command icon whenever kill command is available. I have silence buff warning. This tells me if I ever have or ever don't have aspects of the hawk active. Sometimes you might lose track. You might accidentally press a different aspect, but this is just an easy way to keep track of that, making sure it's active. Trinkets and procs, this weak horror tracks trinket usage but it also tracks heroism ultimate range checker this is what i mentioned just before it tells you your distance from yourself to the mob or the boss burning crusade mob lexicon this is really really good for trash especially and obviously also on bosses it just tells you what each trash mob what abilities they have drum me daddy shows me how many members of your group are in range for you to use drums and also shows the cooldown Thames SSC TK pack, extremely useful on both trash packs and boss fights. It'll either give you timers for the boss abilities or even tell you to stay in or stay out of abilities. It should have really good visual cue to help you with uh, tactics on both, as I say, boss 
and trash. Then we have Bash MC Melee Auto Equip, which unequips your melee weapons during the mind control phase on the Bash encounter, which reduces your damage done to your raid because you're just hitting them with your fists, which is not nothing at all. And then lastly, we have the Void Reaver 20 yards. It's a simple bar that shows you when you're out of range of the arcane orbs, so you don't take any damage from them. Those last two though are quite particular to range DPS on those particular fights rather than something you use every fight. So now I'm going to rebuild my UI from scratch which you can follow along yourself and I'll also go through a few tweaks to the add-ons to get them set up exactly as I have them. So to start off with, I would strongly strongly recommend you download to your computer, not to an add-on, to your computer, the program called WowUp. It's really easy to download just from the WowUp Wow website. And it's just a one-stop shop for all your add-ons, including LVUI, which normally you've got to download separately. But with this add-on, you can just download absolutely everything and update absolutely everything just through this one add-on. So with that as well, we'll start with LVUI and WeCoras. To make things easy for you, I've created a custom WeCora, which is actually an LVUI import. I'll explain that in a second, but basically what that means, you're going to copy this string and insert it into LVUI. This is just so I'm not giving you any kind of links where you've got to download a random set of folders because that's obviously a bit suspicious for some people. It's just an ultra secure way for you to get my LVUI profile without having to download anything. So as we say, first of all, on WowUp, we're going to get WeCoras and we're going to get LVUI. So once those add-ons are installed, or if you've already got those add-ons installed, that's fine. It will look something like this. You just want to skip through the LVUI instructions. And then if you type in ELVUI, or obviously the words LVUI, it will bring you to this screen. The quickest and easiest way to get my profile is if you just click on profiles and then click on import profile, it will give this blank box. From here, all you're going to do is jump to this link that I've put in the description for my UI, click copy LVUI import string, then go back into wow, paste the whole string in and click import now. And there you'll see it's pretty much giving you my UI. The only thing you need to change, again, if you type in LVUI and you select the general tab, you just need to increase the UI scale. Now, anything between 0.6 to probably 0.8 is fine. I personally use 0.80, but for now I'll just leave it on 0.75, which gives you like a sort of a slightly smaller than what I would use or what I use in the other videos. But this is personal preference, set it to whatever you feel comfortable with. And that is pretty much LVUI done. That is LVUI installed. Obviously in a raid environment, you'll have your raid frames will still be up here buffs will still be here you've got a little additional boxes here which you can fill with whatever you want i can use them for health stones or just random bits and pieces that i kind of want to keep i have the first two rows of my bars quite big then i have a slightly smaller bar and then i have two small bars that's just kind of for sort of rotation goes in these first two bars then utility kind of goes here then again just random things like food or calling my pet just stuff i never really use my mount goes in the bottom so it's kind of like a priority listing of high priority medium low that's lvi done weak auras are even easier again in chat just type slash wa for weak aura it'll bring up this box now you can ignore everything again and just click on the import button it gives you a very similar box at this point you're going to just click each of the links again in the description for the weak auras that you want to use once you open the page again click on copy import string Go back to the game, paste it in, and just click import. You should see them appear. So by default, kill commands up there. Set it wherever you want. I personally just put it right in the center of the screen so you always see it, but you can have it wherever you want. It's the same with all the weak colors. Once you import them, they'll have a default position. You just click and drag them to wherever you want them to be. And that's the same kind of process for all the weak colors. So that's all the weak colors done. Next up, we'll configure details, which is the damage and healing and a lot of other stuff tracking so you want to install details damage meter burning crusade once you log back into the game you'll be met with these windows you can just close them down there's a million different ways that you can configure these and i'm not going to go that in depth but if you want two windows so you want one for damage and one for healing it's dead easy to do you just click the cog click window control create window 
drop the second box on top of the first and then just right click the second box and change that to healing dot. This will now show you healing here and your damage done here. And again, you can click and drag these and put them wherever you find optimal. Next, we'll do deadly boss mods. With deadly boss mods, it's similar to details. You can configure it a thousand, a million different ways, but I'll just show you the basics of where you go. If you do type slash DBM, enter, you wanna go over to options and then under bar appearance, down here under timers. If you click move me, so first of all, this is how you can move all the bars because they do all start on top of each other. You can move them out like that. And then if you wanted to make certain bars bigger, again, it's in the same screen there. You change the bar width, bar height and bar scale and just change them to settings that suit you. Lastly, we will download Quartz, which is your cast bar add-on. So lastly, this is probably the one I get asked about the most. It's how to set up quartz, especially how to set up so that your auto shots are a bit more visible. So you want to open up the quartz menu. First thing, if you click toggle bar, it will show you where your bars are kind of going to naturally sit. If you extend the display, click on player. It's in here that you can change the, kind of the scale, the position. I'm sure that's obviously the X and the Y, let's make that a bit bigger. You can move your target focus and pet to a position that kind of suits you, but for the actual um, auto shots, it's under swing. And it's this here, the height that sets it. So if I set the height to five, when I shoot this, you'll see the tiny little bar. So it's not, not really very visible much at all. If you go back into the same settings, go back to the swing, let's say we make this 20 for now should see now that the actual bar itself is much bigger. That coupled with the steady shot just makes your a lot easier for you to track your casting. And that I believe covers everything. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment. If this was useful for you, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.